Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our LISMA partners meeting and workshop. I'm Bill Jacobs, program manager for the Long Island Invasive Species Management Area. I am joined today by our team, Abby Marino, Melody Cerniglia, and Cassidy Robinson. Let's take a look at the agenda. We'll begin with a LISMA update. And at uh, about 1025, we have a partner spotlight with Sean Rooney of Nassau County Soil and Water Conservation District. Then uh, around 1040, we'll have roundtable announcements of about a minute or so each. 11, we'll take a break. And then we have two fantastic presentations. 1115, we have Kathy McGlynn talking about Peconic River Aquatic Control Project. And 12.15, we have Rick Lettinen, Lettinen, excuse me, Rick, if I didn't get that right, Professor of Biology, do invasive species, does invasive species control have unintention, unintentional negative impacts on salamanders? And then 1.15, other business. All right, let's start with reports and plans. We have a few reports and plans to show you. We just completed our annual report, delivered it to DEC on January 31st. A copy of the report is on our website. Thank you to everyone who participated in the report and contributed uh, their work for the year. And congratulations to all for uh, a great year in 2023. So thank you, everybody. Here are a few highlights from the annual report. We protected 124 native species across 22 ecological communities. We can coordinated effective control measures for 11 high priority invasive species at 18 sites. We provided five comprehensive IMAP invasives trainings for 133 participants. We conducted 33 surveying and monitoring events along with 11 management events covering more than 7,500 acres. Uh, this included 10 emerging invasive species surveys, 11 terrestrial priority conservation area surveys, and 12 rake toss surveys of priority water bodies. We hosted 34 education and outreach events, reaching more than 1,400 individuals. And so we thank all of you. Many of you had your own events and uh, projects. So if you include that also, some of those are in the annual report if you wanna see other projects as well, they're in the report. But thank you everybody. We are currently working on our annual action plan for this year. We have to complete that by April 1st. That April 1st comes fairly quickly. We'll be sending out a questionnaire to all of our key partners next week. And the questionnaire asks what uh, your uh, plans are for the year, what your needs are, uh, opportunities for collaboration, things like that. So you keep an eye out in your mailboxes for questionnaire. If it's easier to just shoot us an email rather than fill out the questionnaire, that's fine too, what your plans are for the year. Or uh, we, we'll also meet one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, partners too, to discuss the year. We want to learn what your priorities are and, and what your plans are and, and needs and how we can help. And then we have our strategic plan. We have a currently have a five-year strategic plan that ends this year. So this year, we'll be working on the next five-year strategic plan. And we'd like to establish an ad hoc committee to do strategic planning. So if you're interested in uh, developing plans for the next five years for the Lisma region, uh, let us know, send us an email at invasive at lisma.org. And we'll also be reaching out to some folks as well to and ask them to serve on the ad hoc planning committee. And now I'll introduce Abby to talk about conservation areas. Great, thanks, Bill. 
Uh, yes, I'm Abby. I'm the Contribution Area Manager for LISMA. And um, today I'll be sharing some updates to our water body web map, which helps us prioritize water bodies, um, the especially the most ecologically important water bodies for aquatic invasive species surveying and management. So we're always trying to think of how our work will make the biggest difference. Um, we have more than 700 freshwater bodies and not to mention um, saltwater estuaries that are across Long Island. And we also have many different invasive species, um, aquatic and otherwise. So the, it's really essential to prioritize. And in this thinking, we're trying to respond to aquatic invasive species before they become established, especially where they occur in some ecologically important areas. So this map um, model it has been updated recently. You might have heard of this before if you come to our other meetings. Uh, and you can find it at that QR code. The biggest update is that it incorporates iNaturalist data now. So we have a more comprehensive view of the invasive species observations that are across the region. And that kind of tells us um, places that have had some observations of aquatic invasive species, what water bodies haven't and might need some surveying. Um, and also, particularly for this model, where invasive species intersect with areas of, um, you know, ecologically sensitive areas. So that's where we want to focus our attention. And it's available here if this is helpful to you, if you live in one of these towns, if you are thinking about your uh, aquatic invasive species plan for the year with us, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Oh, sorry. And some interesting um, findings from this new data infusion. Um, more water bodies have been identified with emerging invasive species by bridging in more data, uh, including things like red swamp crayfish, fathead minnow, water lettuce, eastern mosquito fish, floating water primrose, and banded mystery snail. So those are all in our emerging invasive species list that Melody works on. And um, we also found that Phragmites is the most common threat to the highest quality areas, which um, is uh, coincides with what we see on the ground also. And lastly, we find that 94% of these water bodies have no invasive species detections, um, which could you could think of as a good thing, but it also could mean that those, pe those ha places haven't been surveyed, um, intentionally looked at for aquatic invasive species, so we might not know what is there at all. So as we, we use this to do our surveying and management in the coming year, and hopefully it could be useful to you as well. Thank you. And now Melody will talk about early detection and rapid response. Thank you, Abby. Um, now we're gonna do a brief update on EDRR um, here at LISMA. So 2023 was a very eventful first year for our early detection team. We actively managed eight early detection species, either firsthand or via collaboration with our many partners. Species that were managed include fuzzy dutzia, Italian arum, wild teasel, giant reed, salt cedar, arthraxon, ludwigia, and kudzu. Elaborating on kudzu, we partner, partnered with the New York State DEC to monitor and manage six kudzu sites on Long Island, most of which showed no returning instances of kudzu. We will continue to monitor and manage these sites more in 2024 until the kudzu is effectively eradicated from these sites. In addition to management, we surveyed and monitored 20 early detection species, as well as tracking the locations of 50 species across iNaturalist and IMAP invasive databases, with plans to increase this number in 2024. LISMA also deployed and monitored 10 spotted lanternfly uh, traps, working in close collaboration with the New York State Agriculture and Markets to track and record the spread of spotted lanternfly on Long Island. Well, special thanks goes out to the town of Huntington, the town of Hempstead, North Shore Land Alliance, Central Pine Barrens Commission, Sisters of St. Joseph, and the Third House Nature Center for partnering with us in 2023's Spotted Lanternfly Trapping Log. 2023 was a big year for us, and we're looking forward to the new advancements that are yet to come in 2024 for our early detection team. Another very exciting development for our 2023 EDRR season was the acceptance of our FIFRA 2EE recommendations by the New York State DEC. A FIFRA 2EE exemption is a provision that presents special circumstances where it's permissible to use a pesticide in a manner for which it is not specifically labeled. 
following the discovery of an invasive Ravenna grass population in a PSEG right of way in Port Jefferson, LISMA contacted the landowner, landowners to collaborate on a plan for action for this early detection species. It was, however, determined that a FIFRA 2EE exemption would need to be approved for specific herbicide applications in order to treat this population. LISMA prepared the recommendations based on the resources available to us, and we delivered them to the DEC, who promptly reviewed and accepted the applications in December of 2023. Following this, PSEG will now be able to contract an applicator to treat the, the population, and they have plans to start doing so in May of this year. We're happy to announce this and looking forward to future developments with managing this high impact species on Long Island. Okay, so as you can see here, our list of priority early detection species in LISMA is getting longer every year. This year, we have our sites set on nearly 30 species of relative concern scattered across Long Island from Staten Island to Montauk and even the Fire Island National Seashore. Aside from this, we'll be logging and tracking 50 species for 2024 across iNaturalist and IMAP invasive databases that we do quarterly updates on to keep track of our priorities for the coming years. We'll be emailing this list to partners as part of our annual action plan for 2024. However, if you wanna keep an eye out for these species as well and report them to us, you can feel free to reach out to us at invasive at lisma.org, or you can contact me directly at melody at lisma.org. That's all the updates from me. And I'm gonna pass the mic over to Abby, to uh, not to Abby, sorry, to Cassidy to talk about education and outreach. Thanks, Melody. Yes, I'm Cassidy. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager. Now let's get into some of our recent uh, and upcoming Education and Outreach events. Starting off in December, Bill and I presented at the Sand Plain Grasslands Network Virtual Conference on Emerging Invasive Species in Grasslands. The LISMA team also provided an update on the Carmen's River at their virtual meeting. And lastly, Abby presented at the CNLP meeting for Certified Nursery and Landscape Professionals on Invasive Species Impacts and Regulations. And now for our upcoming events. March 7th, 8th and 9th is the Resilient Long Island Symposium, in case you haven't heard. This is our biennial symposium in conjunction with the Long Island Native Plant Initiative, in which community members, researchers, and professionals are invited to learn how to foster resilient ecological communities. This event will kick off on March 7th with post poster social at the Scully Estate, where attendees can network and learn about local conservation work and research while enjoying local refreshments. Next on March 8th is the full day of presentations at Hofstra University. We have exciting talks planned from expert speakers on invasive species policy and management, native plants and restoration, and much more. And we're thrilled to feature our keynote speaker, Shanae Bullock, who will speak on indigenous wisdom. Lastly, we wrap up the event on March 9th with interactive workshops at the Sisters of St. Joseph campus, featuring invasive species management and native plant propagation workshops. If you'd like to join us, you can scan the QR code to register or go to lisma.org slash resilient li 2024. And as a thank you for joining us today, you can register for a discount uh, using the code partners at checkout uh, within the next week. If you'd like to get even more involved in Resilient Long Island, we're still accepting abstract submissions for our poster social until February 22nd. If you're a local researcher or professional working with native plants, invasive species, or other topics listed, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Use the QR code above to submit an abstract for a chance to be selected to feature a poster. With the poster slam, local beer, wine, and snacks, and a talk from Shinnecock author and artist Jeremy Dennis, you won't want to miss Resilient Long Island's kickoff event. Abstract submissions are due um, February 22nd, uh, and uh, admission to the poster social is free with uh, registration to the main conference. Uh, and don't forget to submit your abstracts by the 22nd. Uh, nonprofit organizations uh, and other orgs can also get involved by tabling at this event uh, and, and connecting with attendees. When registering for the event, you can either check off that you're interested in tabling or join the event as a sponsor to get an exhibit table, free tickets, advertisements, and more. Special thanks to all our, of our event sponsors, especially Hofstra, CTUC, and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for providing funding and event spaces. We hope to see you all there. Now, I'd like to introduce our partner uh, presentation, Sean Rooney, representing the Nassau County Soil and Water Conservation District. 
Sean started working for Nassau County Soil and Water Conservation District in August 2021. He has an education in physics with minors in mathematics and urban geography, previously working as a water quality monitor for New York State Parks out of Connectquat State Park and as an intern for the DEC Region 1 office. Since joining Nassau County Soil and Water, he has worked on redesigning the website, adding educational resources, and developing grant applications for new projects. Some of his passions are promoting public access to uh, natural areas, invasive species management, ecological restoration, and the implementation of green infrastructure in urban planning. Sean has obtained drone pilot certification and studied urban forestry and horticulture since joining the district. He also began serving on the board of Friends of Cedarmere Preserve in 2023. Please welcome Sean Rooney. Gotta give me a minute, sir. Sean, you can. Yes, thank you. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Um, good. I have the extra minute, and I will need it because this is a loaded presentation. I don't know why I put together such a long one for a ten-minute slot, but I did. So bear with me. Um, okay, so the Nassau County Soil and Water Conservation District, aside from a mouthful, the organization is um, a few different things. I'm going to kind of go over some of our projects, uh, what we are, and just, uh, yeah, like what we can do for you and the collaborations we can work on in the future. Um, soil and Water Conservation Districts were created after like Dust Bowl to um, promote healthy soil and water for agriculture purposes. Uh, there's ones in every county in New York State and across the country. Um, we're funded partially by the Environmental Protection Fund, partially by the county. Um, depends on the project and where the money is going. For administrative things, we kind of have um, a few staff and a lot of board members to help make decisions. So we uh, we help give money out to organizations that are doing environmental projects. Um, and we help uh, provide programs and technical assistance to residents. Um, we have a ISA certified arborist on staff, Olivia. She's in the call today. Um, I'm also FAA drone certified to help with projects and mapping. Um, and we provide educational programs just like this to the county and residents. Um, go around if they have no one of anyone who's looking for an educational program, we provide them for free. Um, and yeah, it's just a good entity to know about. Uh, I didn't know about them much before I started working here and I lived here my whole life and was interested in this stuff. So it's good that more people know our name and know that we're available to them to help push environmental stuff forward in the county. Um, we don't do too much invasive work, but I've been pushing for it. <laughs> uh, we, one of our large events that we host throughout the year is the Long Island Regional Virathon. It's a event that is uh, put together, honestly, mostly through volunteers. Um, we have, we look for environmental professionals such as everybody in this call. Um, so please, if you have the time, uh, consider volunteering this year to uh, either help students simply move from station to station or help grade or help them proctor tests. And it's, it's simple educational tasks kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the competition essentially is um, an environmental competition. The students receive scholarship money at the end of it uh, to go towards colleges. And it's not only a regional competition, it's also statewide and national. Uh, and even this year, I think the national competition is being held in New York State. So we're really hoping we have some teams win. We've had some success in the past. Uh, I dress up as the mascot for the competition. So if you go, you get a free hug from me in the giant Ronnie costume. I might tackle you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 one of our greatest events, honestly, throughout the year. Um, so consider volunteering if you're an, an environmental professional such as yourself. Um, our largest program uh, in terms of numbers and our day-to-day -day work is the uh, septic replacement program. Uh, it, it tackles a large issue here on Long Island with nitrogen um, being leached into the groundwater table. Uh, this is especially important in the North Shore, uh, where you can see we have a lot of our installations being done for the program. Um, essentially, the program is put into place to offset the cost of getting a new environmentally friendly nitrogen reducing septic system. Um, the homeowners can expect to pay a little out of pocket compared to what they would pay for 
conventional system, and now they're getting a system that uses nitrogen stripping bacteria and leaches almost no nitrogen back into the water table. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's really important along the North Shore. Uh, it's a really it's a good program to know of. Um, if you know anyone who is interested in getting their septic tank replaced, highly recommend they go with this. It's basically a win win program for everybody. Um, up to date, we have 120 installations in the program, and we have allocated over two million dollars in program funds to homeowners for reimbursements. Um, if anyone's interested, this is this is where you can find it at nassau.org slash septic. Uh, it's got all the information there. And you can always reach out to us and call us. We love to talk on the phone about this program. Uh, let's get into the natural work. Um, this is the Hempstead Plains. If you don't know of it, it's one of, it's some of the only grassland habitat we have left here in Nassau County. Uh, it used to expand a large area um, but then was kind of cut down by the parkways, Route 25A and Hempstead Turnpike and stuff. Um, but it's now at the edge of the Nassau Community College campus. It's a great place to visit if you're interested in grassland species or the birds that come with it. Um, but this year we had given out funding to fund a project for the reintroduction of fire um, at the Hempstead Plains, which is very interesting because it hasn't been done there since the 90s officially. Or, and before the 90s, it was even a more a couple decades before it had been tested there. So it's a uh, very new stuff, you know, not the newest management method. It used to historically be used a lot more, but it's exciting to see this um, get this kind of work happen again. If you go there, um, you, there's still probably some remnants of the area. Uh, it's a nice little walk and it's just very out in the open in the sun. <laughs> so wear a hat if you go there. <laughs> but this year's project uh, was very interesting because it was supporting certain native species that were fire dependent, one of uh, which in being the Sand Plain Girardia, which I've never seen, but this is a picture of it and it is beautiful. I would love to go there someday and see some of the uh, rare birds and flowers that are available there. Um, since this area is important for environmental education, it's on the college campus, um, Nassau County Community College, uh, Nassau County Soil and Water did a project there last year to revitalize some rain gardens um, in around the island, and we included some educational signs right out front about native plants and the importance of removing invasive species and things like that. Um, here's another one of our educational programs. It's something that we are a part of. Um, we didn't start this program. This is uh, created by the South Shore Estuary Reserve. It's um, if, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's basically a um, science collection day uh, where you teach students about uh, water health uh, science, teach them about what goes into a healthy water, testing the nutrients for it. Um, we, we show them how to measure the tides and we talk about the importance of the tides. And we also go seine netting for some um, small fish and we do identification of them. Um, and show them how to collect science. It's a citizen science kind of um, project and the data all gets compiled together. Uh, and we see people doing this, participating from all over Long Island and the state. Uh, so it's a really great kind of citizen science campaign thing um, to be a part of. If you're not, it's it's something that's easy to get into. Uh, essentially, you you just, you get a class of high school or college students and you teach them. Um, stuff that we already know a lot of. Luckily, I was able to learn a lot of this water science stuff back working for state parks. Um, so able to transfer the knowledge over to the future. It's not not very glamorous, but it is important. <laughs> um, and speaking of things that don't look too glamorous, uh, the Cedarmere Preserve is a beautiful, untouched, kind of hidden preserve that almost nobody knows about. It's in Roslyn, um, and the the person who, the main guy who's responsible for the area being a uh, Nassau County public preserve nowadays is William Colling Bryant, who was the um, previous homeowner in the area. And uh, he was, he kind of has a big part in history for uh, environmental, um, uh, he kind of helped bridge the gap between um, like the industrial revolution and appreciating the environment. 
nowadays he was a big proponent of the arts and other things like that uh, in history. But the Seamere Preserve is a very beautiful preserve, um, and they did some invasive removal work this year. Um, it, they used Spadefoot um, contracting to get a hydro seeding mix of native grass seeds, and yeah, it was it was essentially just invasive removal with hydro seeding and it's using that native mix with the oats and everything that really uh, stops the ground cover from coming right back up. Um, but yeah, if you if you ever get a chance, I definitely would recommend going to Cedar Mirror. Uh, it's a very nice little preserve for a sunset. And they have a working grist, they have a working mill, working water mill as of this year. So there's a couple new things to see over there. Uh, this is just a picture by the water of the hydro seeding. And a mix. this is the native plant mix. Well, mostly native plant mix, um, resilient plants that were used to combat invasive growth. Uh, but th that was one of our Part C projects that we funded this year. Um, and here's the bulk of the presentation. Uh, it is some of the work that we're doing here in the Muttontown Preserve. Our office is located here in Muttontown. It's in Syosset. Uh, if you haven't been here, I also highly recommend it. It is the county's largest nature preserve. Almost no one knows about it. It's very untouched. And by untouched, I mean, has a lot of invasive vines growing all throughout it, um, which we are working on. But for the first couple of years, we were working on developing the trail system, making sure that no one was getting lost while they were in here. It's a multi-use preserve. People ride horses here, so you're not allowed to have dogs. Um, and it's messed with the soil quality a decent amount. So it's allowed invasives to kind of run rampant in some areas, but other areas are decently healthy. Uh, we also have a varying amount of habitats in this preserve. We have open grass fields, we have old successional field kind of, um, and old growth forests and some new forests from their filled with Norway maples. <laughs> and then one of the more interesting interesting ecological communities we have here is the vernal pools. Uh, we haven't done too much conservation work for them yet, but I've reached out to SeaTuck Environmentals people and hopefully we'll be speaking with them this year about what we can do to help this area. Luckily, nothing is too overgrown around them. And I think I even saw a presentation later in, in today's spotlight on uh, talking about vernal pools. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've participated in New York State Tick Blitz. I did it for two years so far. I didn't do it last year, but I'm planning on doing it again this year. Uh, thank you to Ori from New York State for showing me how to carry a tick flag. <laughs> um, but yeah, we also uh, worked on developing some brochures. And one of the hidden things that you can expect to see if you come here to the Mountain Town Preserve is our piebald deer, our almost albino, uh, the very rare small population of them. This is the brochure we worked on. Um, talks about the history of the area, the historical ruins that are here, some of the wildlife. Um, and yeah, just so everybody knows, as a quick reminder, we also do uh, soil group worksheets for agricultural tax purposes. Uh, if anyone's interested in defining the soil type um, for tax assessments. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out to us for any help with environmental education things, rain gardens, arborist stuff. Uh, we also just released our new newsletter. It's available on our website at nassauswcd.org. And I think that's everything. I feel like I skipped something, but I'm trying to go quick. So that's just a general idea of what we are. Thank you, Sean. Excellent presentation. Open for questions. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing great work over there. Thank you. Yeah, does oh, anyone have I any questions for Sean? Olivia muted. Hold on. There was one comment in the chat. My about, audio is not working. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Glad we could hear you, though. <laughs> the, can, uh, Sean, can you see the comment in the chat then, maybe? Oh, he can't. He can hear me, though. Okay. I had to turn off on Olivia's computer. Sorry. My audio is not working today. Hope you enjoyed. What's, what's the question in all. the chat? I don't see it either. I don't see it. Oh, it was just a comment about the day in the life of a river um, that uh, started by the Pine Barrens Commission. So I think just a, a comment on the program. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ed.
Well, if you have questions for Sean later on, there's uh, ways to reach Sean. So thank you again, Sean. Great job. Yep, always a pleasure. And let's have roundtable announcements. Let me pull up the uh, participants list. I'll go around the room. And if you have an announcement, you have about a minute. If you have something more extensive to say, you can uh, send us an email or, or call, talk to us by phone. We can print events and other announcements in our newsletter too. That's always an option. So let's see. I'm going to skip the, well, I won't skip it. Let, Kathy McGlynn, Kathy's one of our presenters, but do you have any other announcements? I'd just like to say that we now have a statewide watercraft inspection steward program coordinator, which is really exciting. And that we continue to hire some regional coordinators as well. So we'll keep I'll keep you posted on that. And I also wanted to give a shout out for our region one coordinator who's working really hard to recruit high school students to do a massive round of water chestnut pulls in Nassau County. That's nice. all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And is it Yuri that that has? Yuri, do you have any announcements? We're out of alphabetical order. No announcements on my end. Sorry, guys. Can okay. you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sorry about scaring you all with uh, stealing <laughs> Abby's name in the beginning. <laughs> it turns out it was my fault. And I see there are several Abby Marinos, and that's because I shared my personal Zoom link. But I'm glad everybody's here but uh, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> okay, so Alan, you're next. Yeah, good morning all. <clears throat> I work for the, uh, the town of Brookhaven. Uh, yeah, the town's been quite successful in getting various grants to um, remove invasives, restore habitats. Um, I'd like to thank Lisma for the uh, letters of support for all those grants. So we have, um, money to restore about an acre um, on the east side of Swan River. It was an old car yard, so we've removed the car yard, we're removing the invasives this year and planting natives. Uh, we have ground funding to do something similar in Cedar Beach. There's about 40 acres of area that we're going to remove invasives, uh, such as a salt cedar. Uh, we have another grant to remove invasives from West Meadow Beach. Um, that's going to be quite a large job. There's a lot of invasive species throughout. And we were recently awarded money to look at invasive species within the Swan Lake, which is on the South Shore. This is just a planning study to work out what invasive aquatic species are found in the lake um, and come up with suitable chemical or mechanical methods to remove those invasive species. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Congratulations on the Grant, keep yeah, up the thanks. work. Next is Andrew. You can unmute if you have an announcement. Andrew Merkel, I think it's Merkel. He says no report. Okay. okay, all right. Well, next is Bob Chapman. Bob, do you have anything to report? And Brooke will be next after Bob. All right, Brooke Shulman, you're up. Do you have any announcements? Um, yes, so for National Invasive Species Awareness Week, we are going to be hosting a workshop at Wertheim National Wildlife Refuge. That'll be Saturday, March 2nd from 1 to 2 p.m. It will be held in the multi-purpose room and it will cover topics including the threats posed by invasive species, identification of common Long Island invaders, simple steps to prevent the spread of invasive species, and best practices for managing invasive species. Throughout the week of NISA, which is February 26th till March 3rd, we're also going to be posting updates to our Facebook about invasive species on different facts and such. So that will be on the Long Island National Wildlife Refuge's Facebook page. Thank you, Brooke. Sounds good. Jackie, you're up next. Do you have anything to report? And then John, we're not after Jackie.
Uh, hi, this is Jackie Fenlon. Uh, we're always excited to work with LISMA, and we are very lucky to have just received a New York State DEC grant. Um, Juliana for uh, Lake Management in Little Long Pond and Long Pond in the Long Pond Greenbelt in Sag Harbor. Uh, so Juliana Quant is also on the call too, so she can speak a little bit more about that, but we're excited for your support and excited to get to work on that. All right. Well, congratulations on your grant, Jackie and Juliana. All right, John, we're next. You're up. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm pleased to announce we're hiring two Forrester Ones. Uh, Whoa. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Long time coming, but um, hopefully within the next couple weeks, they'll, they'll be on board. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you, John. That's uh, good news. Uh, yeah, good. All right, I'm looking forward to meeting them. Juliana, did you want to add anything? Sure. Um, we, as Jackie mentioned, we have the Lake Management Grant. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And so that's going to be focusing on, on Little Long Ponds and Long Pond. And, and it'll help us give an idea of what the current status of the ponds are and uh, recommendations for how we can manage them appropriately. Um, we also are going to be continuing the invasive species management over the summer um, with contractors who are qualified to spray and also hand remove. And we are hiring some temporary staff, seasonal staff, who will be hand pulling with us over the summer from uh, about May through as long as we can keep them um, through October will be best. But if you know anybody who's looking for a summer job, then feel free to point them my way. All right, great. Thank you, Juliana. Next up is Megan Pastuka. Hi, Megan. Hi, I don't have anything. Thanks. Okay. Mitch O'Neill. Mitch, do you have an update? Hi, this is Mitch O'Neill with the IMAP Invasives team at the New York Natural Heritage Program. Uh, no specific updates, so I'll just say for anyone planning invasive species surveys and management for the next year, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything about using IMAP tools. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Olivia, you're up next. Do you have any announcements? No announcements, but thank you. Okay. Orazio, Marine. Uh, no, I'm just uh, here basically listening for Yuri. He's away on vacation, but uh, I don't have anything from him. Sorry. Okay. All right. Tom Algeyer. Hi, Tom. Good morning. I'm Tom Algeyer, the Invasive Species Coordinator here with New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets. And for a change, I have some good news. Um, <laughs> so the Asian longhorn beetle quarantine on Long Island has shrunk. Uh, we have not eliminated it yet, uh, but... The new map, uh, there's a link in the chat box there uh, for the new map. So the northwest corner, the southeast and southwest corners of the quarantine have been kind of clipped off. And uh, so we have shrank the quarantine area in, on the Nassau County, South County line there. Um, so major progress, lots of years going into that. Um, in order to remove a section of, of the quarantine area, it has to go through three consecutive cycles of survey without a detection. Um, so there were many years of work, um, you know, to get to that point. Uh, however, we have we have found trees this past year in 2023. So the quarantine is still there. Uh, we have at least another three years, probably more. Um, but definitely progress. So good news. Thank you, Tom. It's, it's uh, wonderful to hear good news. You guys are doing an amazing work with that. Thank you. Vicki. Vicki Bustamante, do you have an announcement? Oh, hi there. Hi. Um, I'm not sure if I have an announcement related to what invasive species, but um, at Third House uh, Nature Center, we put in an application for a grant with Rewild to put in a rain garden up at Third House, kind of in the front. They're doing a renovation of the building right now. So it's like ideal because the whole front has been uh, 
disrupted the soil. So we have like the perfect spot. It's already prepped for to put in a garden. And uh, so that'll be exciting because we'll do that with our interns, whether it happens this spring or in the fall, you know, either way, we'll bring our interns in on that. And then let's see what else. Uh, uh, I, I'm, tr we're trying to, we're going, we want to do a survey, a, a tree survey in Montauk to try to figure out the regenerative capability of the forest out here. You know, we have severe deer browse and I, I'm just personally uh, concerned that there's really very little uh, seedling trees, you know, to continue on the forest. So I'm trying to, I'm not an ecologist. I've never taken an ecology course. So I'm trying to work out a surveying technique that we can use. So I'm, we're working on that, but we're going to do it. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I'm meeting with somebody on Monday who's done surveying for the town of East Hampton. He works for the town. And uh, I, th I th that's really all for now. All right. Thank you. Good luck with the deer survey, Vicki. Yeah. It's a, a huge issue here on Long Island. Yeah. Thank at, you. at least as big, if not bigger than non-native invasive species. All right. And did I miss anyone? Any other announcements? Oh, uh, yeah. Steve Young. Oh, hi, Steve. Hi. I just wanted to say that <clears throat> I'll be down doing botanical work a number of times in Napig State Park this summer and always on the lookout for invasives. Also, um, I sent out a guide to the bush honeysuckles, an identification guide. I sent it to IMAP and hopefully they will send it out to the PRISM leaders and uh, distribute it that way, uh, native and non-native bush honeysuckles. And also I've been helping uh, Long Island Botanical Society finish up their atlas of the plants of long island so hopefully that will come out soon too nice well thank you steve sure the bush honeysuckle guide will be helpful for sure for us and probably everybody else that does the ecology or botany kind of work sounds good anybody else uh hi this is tim Wenskis, the dec forester for new york city oh, hi, Tim. um most of my winter has been spent doing outreach stuff. Um, so uh, outreach on beech leaf disease and a couple other uh, invasive insects um, to a number of different groups. Um, no no on the ground management for me this time. All right. Thanks, Tim. Anybody else just jump in? Because I don't have everybody's name up here. I'm missing some names. Any other updates, announcements? All right, that sounds like that's about it. Let's take a break and be back at 11.15.